At the outset, I would like to express my very sincere thanks to the Indian Chess Society for giving me this opportunity to share with you this very important presentation on the role of masks in this current COVID-19 pandemic. I also bring to you greetings from my institute called the Palmoke Research and Education Foundation situated in the city of Pune. How do you know that a surgical mask is real or is it a fake surgical mask? One simple experiment that you could do is you take a surgical mask, keep it, hold it like a cup, and then you pour about half a glass of water inside this and hold it. If it can hold that half a glass of water without any, any drop coming out, then you know that it's a good quality surgical mask. So a true surgical mask is made up of three layers. The outer layer is the one that is, uh, that is water that, that protects you from uh, from water solutions. The middle layer is the one that is the filtered layer, uh, which is made up of melt blown uh, filter from uh, these are nanotubes that are <clears throat> made from plastic like materials. And they actually are a wire mesh that uh, cause greater filtration than what we call as a woven, uh, woven fabric filter. Uh, and then the inner layer is made up of uh, an absorbent uh, cloth because, because on the inner side, you sweat a lot, and therefore it has to absorb the, uh, the sweat. So here is an N95 respirator mask, which is folded, which is molded. Uh, it, cannot be fold, it cannot be folded, otherwise it will crack. And you can see that there is no valve over here. This is another N95 mask, uh, which is molded, non-foldable. But you can see that there is an exhaust valve over here. So you can breathe out through that valve. And here is a foldable. Uh, N95 mask, which does not have a valve. So these are the three different varieties of N95 masks that are available. And if I give you a choice to pick up one of these, if you go to the shop and all of them cost you the same price, which one are you likely to pick up? I'm sure you're more likely to pick up the middle one, isn't it? The one with the valve. It looks a little chic. It looks, looks rich. It looks stylish. And therefore you would go for that mask. But here is a sad statement. They should not be used for the COVID-19 protection. Why? Because the valve allows the air to pass out very easily. So if you're a person who is infected with the coronavirus, you will actually be releasing a lot of these viruses uh, through the valve uh, of the, uh, the, the valve mask. So a valve mask is not recommended in this current COVID-19 pandemic. As I said, the tight fit is an absolute must if you're wearing an N95 mask. There's no point in wearing an N95 mask if there is leakage from all the sides of the mask. The N95 mask is not very easy to breathe. You wear a surgical mask and you wear an N95 mask. You'll see the difference. N95 masks are an effort for you to breathe. And especially if you have an underlying asthma or a lung problem, uh, you, you wouldn't tolerate the N95 mask for longer than half an hour. You know, there are a lot of fake masks circulating in the market. So how do you identify a fake mask? This is how a mask should look like uh, the N95 mask. It should, it should have all these things printed on that. Six things that should be printed. But the most important one is the NIOSH TC approval number. It must be printed on the mask. If it is not printed, then you know that it is not a, a, a correct mask. It is a fake mask. So all these things have to be printed on the N95 mask. The NIOSH TC approval number, the brand name, the NIOSH name in block letters, then the type of the filter, is it P, N, N, P or R, uh, the lot number or the model number. All these have to be printed on the N95 mask for us to be sure that it is an authentic N95 mask. Judge that. Go to the CDC website, search for the companies that are approved for making N95 masks, and then make sure that the company that is marketing this mask has got the TC number that is there on the website. It is only then that you could be assured that you're wearing the correct mask for N95. Can N95 masks be reused? How? Because in an ideal situation, an N95 mask should be worn only once. You wear it once, you remove it, it has to be disposed of. No mask that is spoiled or has got damaged 
should be ever reused again. So please be very careful of that. N95 mask should never be shared with others. So your N95 mask is your N95 mask. It should never be shared with anybody else, not to another doctor, not to another nurse. So microwaving doesn't help. Ultraviolet radiation does not help. Autoclaving does not help. And alcohol sterilization, so spraying it with the alcohol does not work at all. All these procedures have been shown to damage the filtering capacity of the mask. And therefore, these should not be used at all for disinfecting the N95 masks. So what are the ways? <clears throat> so rather than calling it as reuse, uh, there's a term that is used for that called as extended reuse. The commonest and perhaps the simplest way of doing that is air drying. But for that, you need four masks. You need to have four N95 masks. You label them as one, two, three, four. You wear this N95 mask today. When you come back, you put it in a paper bag and you leave it there for three days. On the subsequent three days, you will wear the other three masks. On the fifth day, when this mask that you had put in the paper bag, it has already been air dried for three days. You can use that on the fifth day. So this is recycling by simply air drying it in the cupboard. <clears throat> Do not keep it under the sun. The sun damages those uh, the filtering capacity of the N95. So keep it in a cupboard, but don't keep it closed. Keep it open so that there's some evaporation that can take place. So this is one way of uh, uh, reusing the N95 mask. Or you can heat it in an oven at 70 degrees for, three, for 30 minutes because the virus is known to uh, survive only up to 65 degrees for half an hour. So if you do it for 70 degrees for half an hour, the coronavirus gets killed and you can reuse the uh, N95 mask. It doesn't cause damage to the filtering capacity. The other way is to dry heat it in a rice cooker. Do not put water at the bottom. Dry heat 150 to 160 degrees for three minutes. This is something that has been advocated from Taiwan. And then more recently from United States, there are two universities, Duke University and Yale University, have done a lot of experiments and shown that you can do chemical sterilization with H2O2. This is the only chemical that uh, does not damage the filtering capacity of the N95 mask. You need to use 480 parts per million of H2O2 for a duration of 45 minutes. And the entire process takes around four hours. So maybe in a hospital setting, this could be one way of uh, sterilizing a mass of N95 masks in the hospital. I have these single layer, single layer so-called surgical masks that people wear. Putting one layer, uh, it's very cheap, just costs three to five rupees. It's made up of a single layer of fabric or wood pulp tissue paper. It is used only for food processing industry. It should not be used for the current corona pandemic. Uh, one of the other masks that is very commonly uh, available in the market, and I've seen it being used by a large number of people, is this uh, dust mask, also called as a nuisance mask or a comfort mask. It is actually a flexible paper pad uh, that fits over the nose. Uh, it's got a single elastic band at the, behind. And uh, this is to be used only for uh, conditions like moving, sweeping, dusting, or protecting yourself against allergens or something like a dust storm. It does not offer any kind of protection against hazardous dust, gases, vapors, or even microbes. Uh, and certainly should not be used during this uh, corona uh, pandemic. This research was conducted by the School of Molecular Engineering at the University of Chicago, where they, they compared cotton, silk, chiffon, flannel, the synthetic fibers and the combination of these to find out how effective are they in filtering out these so-called uh, potential coronaviruses. The cotton quilt offered a protection of 96% of particles which were less than 300 nanometers. In fact, better than the N95 mask, better than the surgical mask. But if you wear a cotton fabric with 600 threads per inch, the density of the fibers, then the efficacy is as much as a surgical mask. If you combine the different fabrics, cotton with chiffon, 97%, cotton with flannel, 95%, cotton with silk, 94%, cotton plus chiffon and cotton plus flannel, uh, 
is as good as cotton quilt. A cotton quilt is as good as the N95 mask in terms of protection. Uh, so these are the summary findings of this paper. A well-fitting mask is crucial. So if you wear a mask and it's leaking from the sides, it offers no protection. Uh, the 600 PPI cotton should be preferred to the 80 threads per inch cotton, uh, obviously because this does not offer any protection. A hybrid fabrics produce better, filter better filtration efficacy, mainly because of the mechanical as well as the electrostatic charges that are present in the chiffon layer or present in the silk layer or in the flannel layer. So it's a combination of mechanical filtration as well as electrostatic filtration uh, that, uh, that has uh, combined together to produce such wonderful filtration efficacy for homemade masks. And I thought this paper was absolutely brilliant. So in this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, is it necessary to wear a mask? Who should wear a mask? And which mask is appropriate? This is one study that actually showed that talking produces as many droplets as coughing. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is, you know, we have always been led to believe that it's only coughing and sneezing that transmits the uh, infection through the aerosol droplets. Not necessary. Even talking also generates a large number of these aerosol droplets. And in fact, this study actually showed that, uh, you know, talking produces as many aerosols as what coughing does. And therefore, so there are, these are the three different things that can help in the transmission of these of this infection through the droplets, talking, coughing, and sneezing, all three. And depending on the size of the aerosol that is emitted, uh, you, can, you can see the distance that it travels. If it's a very large aerosol droplet, around 10 microns, then it, it does not go for more than uh, one to three feet, it falls down before that. If it's a little lighter, between five to 10 microns, it can travel for up to three to five feet. And even if it's an aerosol, uh, it can travel for much longer distances. Now, from what we know so far, uh, the coronavirus transmits only through the large infectious droplets and the small infectious droplets. We are not yet sure whether it gets transmitted through the, the droplet nuclei, which are very, very tiny, and therefore they can remain uh, for a long period of time. There is some suggestion that the coronavirus could also be transmitted by the droplet nuclei. Uh, which means that, you know, your distancing of one meter and two meters is going to offer you no protection at all because uh, it can travel much larger distances. Now, something that has really worried us more recently, and these are two papers, one from the British Medical Journal and one from the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, published just in the last month, or perhaps even less than that, observations that many patients who are COVID uh, positive they are asymptomatic. Now, this is something to worry about because as of now, we were only recommending people that if you have a symptom, you cover yourself or you cover yourself when you're being exposed to somebody who has got symptoms. But here is somebody who has got no symptoms at all, has the coronavirus inside the throat, even if the person is not coughing or the person is not sneezing, that person is releasing all these droplets through talking. And therefore, there's a potential risk for infecting a large number of people, especially because of these asymptomatic people. So let's come to the summary slide of which slide should be worn, by whom and where. So we have three options. We have the N95 respirator mask, we have the surgical mask, and we have the cloth mask. Let us keep only these three options. The single layer mask is out. The dust mask is out. Do not use this for this pandemic at all. Only three, you have only three options. In the community setting, the, the whole community, they should either wear a cotton mask or wherever feasible, wherever practical, wherever affordable, wherever available, use a surgical mask. But remember that a surgical mask can be worn only once for a period of four to six hours. You keep on replacing that uh, during the day. Uh, you do not use the same mask every day after that. The, the cotton mask can be washed every day and then reused the next day. So that's the advantage of having a cotton mask. In the clinic or in the hospital setting, in the reception area, all patients must be given a mask. And please listen to this very carefully. Every patient who enters inside your clinic, every patient who enters inside your hospital must be wearing a mask. Either the patient brings his own cotton or the cloth mask from home, or he's given a surgical mask at the reception. 
every patient must wear a mask from tomorrow onwards receptionists nurses helpers housekeeping staff in fact all healthcare providers in the clinic in the hospital must wear a surgical mask in the outpatient clinic all healthcare providers must wear a surgical mask so doctors nurses assistants technicians all should wear a surgical masks in the wards where there are other patients everybody should wear a surgical mask if there is a covid ward you should i you should wear a n95 mask preferably an n95 mask all aerosol generating procedures and which are the aerosol generating procedures intubation chest compression ventilation using a ventilator non invasive ventilation nebulizing high flow nasal oxygen suctioning bronchoscopy spirometry during all these procedures you must wear an n95 mask nothing less than that paramedics drivers security in your hospital they must all wear a surgical mask i think it's all very simple and straightforward n95 to be used only in two conditions the covid wards in the icus and especially in the icus if you are performing aerosol generating procedures ensure that there is good ventilation and hand hy- hand hygiene is also very important at these points of time uh, you have to wear it snugly it has to cover your nose it has to be below your chin it has to be it has to cover at least your chin and then at least there should be something over here to reduce this gap over here and then should be tied behind either in the form of an ear loop or tied behind uh, the head like a mask has a story to tell a story to teach and the potential to save millions of lives uh life will never be the same tomorrow once the uh, lockdown is lifted we will never be able to live the life that we lived before life will change for a long time to come and i believe that uh, the covid-19 pandemic is there to remain for at least the next couple of years and we will need to live with that a simple thing like a mask can have such a profound impact on the way we live our lives Thank you very much.